The Big Red Kitchen Show is brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, The Pampered Chef Products provided by Consultant Heidi Lepold, Sea of Red Wine, D. Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D. Tendenza, Food Styling, and Photography. Welcome to the Big Red Kitchen Show, the show about former Nebraska football players who love to cook. They're big guys, but they're comfortable in the kitchen, and we're so excited that you've joined us today. On today's show, we're going to hear an interview about a former Nebraska football player. We're going to find out about what he's been doing and where he's been since, he last, last, since you last saw him on the football field. We'll be talking about one of his favorite recipes, and then we are going to talk about a kitchen gadget that we would like to demonstrate for you, something to save you a bit of time in the kitchen. Plus, we're going to be doing a beverage pairing that'll really enhance today's featured dish. I'm Sherry Potter, and I'm a professional food stylist and food photographer, and I love testing out new recipes in my studio kitchen. And today's recipe by Jay Foreman is a a wonderful summer recipe. It's a salad I think you're all going to enjoy finding a little bit more about. But before we go on with the show, I would love to introduce you to my wonderful co-host, Angela. Hi there, I'm Angela Waltman. I am an avid cook, I love sports, and I've made my career as a writer. So all of these loves were able to come together when I created Big Red Recipes which is a cookbook featuring all former Nebraska football players. They've got some great recipes in there and they've all chosen some charities that benefit from this book. So it's been a really fun project mm -hmm. and it's been really fun to bring them on this show too. Um, to learn more about the book, please visit BigRedRecipes.com um, to find out a little bit more about the players that we have in the book and also some of the players that we will be bringing on this show. Yes. So today we have a very special guest. Our guest is Jay Foreman. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this name. He played linebacker for us from 94 to 98 before moving on to various NFL teams and had a very long successful career in the NFL. But before um, I go on, I think we should hear more about Jay from Jay. What do you I think? I think so. All Let's right, welcome Jay, to the come show. on. <laughs> oh, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for having me. So glad you could come. Yeah, Hi, thank Jay. You. Thank thanks. you so yeah, much. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Good, uh, good. So good tell thinking. us a little bit more about what you've been doing since you left the Huskers. Well, I was fortunate enough to play eight years in the NFL, so I, was, I went to Buffalo, which is kind of like uh, Lincoln on steroids, and then I, be, <laughs> then I went to my first major city uh, after growing up in Houston, which was definitely a climate change and a culture change. Uh, then I went to New York City uh, for a year and uh, San Francisco. So I think I covered every coast because I am originally from Minnesota. So uh, it was a good experience. I, I always tell people it was a paid internship to uh, <laughs> explore the United States of America. So I was pretty happy. Absolutely. Yeah. So which one was your favorite? Which which city was your favorite? <laughs> Whoever was paying me. That, <laughs> let's get that out there. They, they, everybody always asks me, how many teams did you want to play for? I want to play for all 32. You know, Ooh. They, they, you know, and, uh, but, I'd probably say Buffalo just because it was yeah. closest to Lincoln. It sure. was the first city that I kind of uh, went to, obviously, after the NFL, and I made a lot of long-lasting relationships, mm -hmm. and, and uh, we were winning there. So that, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the most important thing. Absolutely. So Zach Potter, who has been on our show, has told us uh, when he was in the NFL, there was a big variance in the training tables. Oh, yeah. for the different teams. So tell yeah. us what, what your thoughts are on that. Well, when we got to, well, well first of all, when it transitioned from Nebraska to where you were sometimes getting, uh, you know, steak and crab legs and stuff like that, we, we felt like we were treated like kings. And when you go to a team like Buffalo where they're trying to keep you lean and everything, and making you egg beaters and stuff like that versus oh, real eggs, uh, my body didn't adjust too well, <laughs> trust me. And I, I had plenty of late night snacks. So uh, Buffalo was first class. Cause, so they sent us home with meals, uh, especially as a rookie, because uh, when you transition from college, you have to literally live on your own. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to cook your own meals, even on, when they don't have them for you and stuff like that. And you have to grocery shop and do yeah. stuff that the real world does, uh, even though we're getting paid pretty handsomely. Uh, but then, you know, Houston was first. Every team is pretty good. The only team that I ever heard that was, wasn't, I guess, uh, first class was the Bengals. And I think they stepped it up now. Uh, but the Giants probably stood out 
uh, from all my four teams uh, because anything and everything besides what we ate, they got for us. Ooh, all the giant fans are cheering. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Of course, the Bengals, my favorite team. Oh, uh, well, sorry about that. To be yeah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> what about those Cowboys? <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> so moving on from playing in the NFL, you came back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Yep. So came back to, to where all your fans were, and you started a foundation. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I started a former foundation. It, uh, what we do is we provide grants to uh, grassroots companies that can help in uh, service uh, underprivileged uh, diabetics. So uh, the reason why I started is because I lost four family members to complication of diabetes. Uh, and then also my dad just two years ago had a, a major portion of his foot amputated. So I felt like uh, going to Walgreens one time with him, uh, even though he does pretty well and has insurance, I saw what he paid for uh, his testing strips and his uh, insulin pumps. I thought it was outrageous, even uh, with the whole uh, health care reform, which I know nothing about. But um, I felt like it was way too expensive, so I wanted to you know, start something to help people and relieve some of the stress because uh, there's a lot of diabetics out there that aren't able to uh, get this, the, the natural and the, and the necessities that they need. Uh, and this is what we do is try to help them as many people as possible. Well, perfect. Well, we're really happy to, to be able to promote the foundation. We're trying to make the show as diabetic friendly as possible today <laughs> to fit in yeah, with the Foreman yeah. Foundation. Right. And so we'll move on to the recipe. This is a diabetic friendly shrimp Louie salad. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about where this recipe yeah. came from? Well, it came from my grandma. Oh. Ja yeah, Jana Love Foreman. Grandma story. Yeah, right. Yeah. Look, yeah. everything yes. that she's made was always better than what I, what, what I do, but <laughs> Uh, you know, and I used to spend all my summers in D.C., uh, especially when my dad was playing. Uh, my first four or five years of my life, I, you know, grew up with my grandparents. So, uh, you know, on the East Coast, we get a lot of more seafood than we do here in the Midwest and fresh seafood at that. Mm -hmm. And so she used to make this for us all the time. It's kind of cheap and cheerful, and then also it keeps the, the waistline a little bit down, even though now it's, it mine's expanding a little <laughs> bit. But uh, I think this is a, a, a good meal for uh, the hearty, hearty uh, eater and then also somebody that's trying to be healthy as well. All right, perfect. So, now that we're talking about the salad, Sherry, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your preparation of it, and let's get right to it. Well, I'm, we are going to start with talking a little bit about shrimp, because you did yeah. say that you, you are used to fresh shrimp. So, yeah. kind of the main ingredient in this, because this is a meal, actually, isn't it? Wouldn't you consider yeah, it Yeah, it's a, it's a bigger salad, so okay. if you went out to a restaurant, this is the uh, entree size, or yeah. I'd like the entree size. Everything I eat is the entree <laughs> size. But, <laughs> but it, it is an entree size uh, salad, and, and shrimp is the main ingredient. And uh, the good thing about shrimp, you can kind of make it as, as flavorful as you want or, or, or not, but there is a, a, you know, a big difference between uh, fresh shrimp and, and not so fresh shrimp. So we're, you know, hopefully we, we can touch no, on that. I'm glad you said that. The fresh shrimp and not so fresh shrimp, yeah. because mm -hmm. that is, that was my, when I read the recipe, it doesn't really say what to use, it just says cook shrimp. So I thought, well, let's, let's try a few variations. I love to do that, like to do a little testing. So today I'd like to find out who of the two of you has the palate and can, dis <laughs> can discern what is fresh and what is right straight from the grocery store little case with the ice in it? Do you know there's going to be a test today? No, but uh, I like my odds. So, you know, <laughs> okay. I'm, a I'm a shrimp connoisseur. Okay. You know, so okay. I, All right. I'm a, you the know, gauntlet I'm a, has been thrown. The yes. gauntlet has been thrown. So I'm, you, know, you guys just close your eyes. Okay. Everybody, all the viewers can see oh. if they have their eyes closed. So mm -hmm. we're you you guys close your eyes and we're going to talk about the two shrimps. Okay. So these are the ones right straight from the grocery store. Look at how beautiful they are. Lovely, 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 lovely. So those are the grocery store shrimp. Put the little sign. Can you guys keep your eyes closed. Cook <laughs> cook shrimp from the grocery store. Okay. And they're right here. And then we have the lovely fresh shrimp right from the grocery store as well, but they're fresh out of the dairy case, raw. And we're gonna put that right there and the sign right there. So, now, eyes closed. Are you, Angela? Is she cheating? <laughs> She's cheating. <laughs> I'm gonna get the big red handkerchief out. And oh no. Blindfold you, blindfold she's, you. She's a Patriot fan. She, oh Bangles. yes. <laughs> Bangles, bangles. So, got the big spoon here and I'm going to give you each a taste. Oh, you keep your eyes shut. Oh, we're now. keeping eyes shut. Keep your eyes shut. Okay. Taste, taste, taste. Coming towards you with a big spoon. Me or him? Him. <laughs> and I will. And Angela, big, big fork. <laughs> okay, what do you think? I think that one's fresh. You think that one's fresh? It was good. It was really good. I think it's... Uh... All right, well, we'll try, we'll try this one. Okay. 
Okay, big spoon. All right. Ooh, that's distinctively different. Distinctively different, all right. Angela. Same thing, Fork. Okay. First one was fresh. Yep, first one was You right. guys are great. So isn't there a difference? It's a, there's a, there's difference. a big difference. I wanted the viewers at home to see. Okay, so I paid a dollar less a pound for these. Really? Than for these. Yeah, look at the size. And, look and, at the size. And, yeah. and, and for me, it's, it's texture. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have right. uh, issues with uh, seafood because of texture, but you can always tell. Uh, the fresh versus uh, already pre-cooked, in, yeah. in my opinion. And I, I like the agree. ones, it, it takes a couple more minutes to, you know, to boil them or season them up however mm -hmm. you want, but uh, the taste is always better. So I think an extra couple minutes is always good. Yeah. I, would, I would agree with that. Yeah, so I, but you know, it, people are kind of a little bit intimidated by fresh shrimp. They're a little afraid of it. They mm -hmm. go to the grocery store <laughs> and they, if they feel like, oh, I, I don't know how, quite how to do that. But the nice thing that they do at the grocery store for us is they get it already prepared. I mean, they take and they devein it or take the little, the little vein out of the backside, which is their intestinal tract. They take that all mm -hmm. out. They split it for us. So you can see it's all yeah, ready. It's ready to go. Ready to go. Yeah. So they've really taken the work out and it's cheaper. It's cheaper to buy. And like you two just attested to the fact that it's really, really good. Now, something else that you can do with fresh shrimp that you really miss out on with the pre cooked shrimp is the fact that you can butterfly it and grill it and do a few other things. You put a pre-cooked shrimp on the grill, it just turns into this rubbery yeah. mass of you don't yuckiness. Know whether, it's yeah, really you don't know whether it's uh, you know shrimp or squid or anything like that. No, and, and when no. you butterfly it, uh, you can get some you can put butter in there, spices and you can right. do uh, anything yeah, you want. Out of the way. Excellent. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about butterflying these shrimp because again People get really intimidated and they yeah. think, oh, that's so hard to do. So a lot of times when you're going to butterfly, butterfly a shrimp, if you buy this fresh from the market, you would have to take a really sharp knife and you would slit through this tough little exterior here. And you, you start your knife at the top and you cut all the way to the back. But then when you butterfly it, you're going to start from the back and go to the front. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to show you quite a little bit how to do Have you butterfly shrimp before? I have not. You have not. No. Jay, have you? I have not. Just, not, on not, on <laughs> <laughs> not on purpose. Not on purpose. I'm learning here, it, it, but it's good purpose. that I think you're adding something to my cooking skills. So this is, uh, that is educational the as well that is the and goal. informative. Yeah. So See, we, we want our yeah. guys to not only just be comfortable in the kitchen, <laughs> but we want them to pick up the tools and actually use the tools in the kitchen. So you're going to start at the back of your shrimp uh, with your shrimping knife or your like a paring knife or whatever, and just slit it mm -hmm. right through. But don't don't go all the way through. But it's super easy. Oh, there it is. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Is it is. Are you easy. leaving the shell on? At We're this leaving point? the shell on. Okay. I want to tell you a little bit about the shells on shrimp. The okay. shells on shrimp actually give the shrimp more flavor. They keep the moisture inside the shrimp so yep. that if you when you cook it, it doesn't dry out. Yep. Okay. So and it's super simple to remove. So if you're going to put this on the grill, you've got the you you might want to put it in a little brine. A lot of times people will put do all their butterflying. So Jay, I'm going to have you butterfly a few more of these because I want okay. I want I want so our I guy back to, back to the knife. front, right? Yeah, back, back to, the to the front, front. back to the right. front. Back and, up, uh, watch I out now. And, <laughs> and I'm and I'm left-handed and I kind okay, of do, do right it. right-handed, so some depends on who's watching. Yes, you know, yes. You might be in some trouble. <laughs> But it's really quite simple to do. Yeah, and it is not yeah. too bad, right? They're they're soft. They're really yeah, easy. Yeah, first to time. Let me see how I did that. What do you think there? Mm. That was an average at best, but I think I can improve on that. I think so. I think <laughs> so. I, think I can improve on that. You have just added a whole new flavor palette flavor. to the shrimp. Watch shrimp. out! The neighbors are going to be smelling <laughs> shrimp for the next week. <laughs> I apologize in advance. I'm getting better at my butterflying. Look at that there. Look at that. Okay. Perfect. Better. And it looks so pretty when yes. they're when they're cooked up. Yeah. Go ahead. You, you talked about the shells and yeah. it's equivalent to I when I cook, it's something totally different. Cook my chicken breast or chicken thighs, mm -hmm. I keep the skin on and then I take it off for the flavor. So it's the same thing. It's equivalent to the same, same thing. Same thing. And then if they're a little sticky, if you put them in the salted water, so you would use like two quarts of water and about a fourth a cup of salt. You just dump these in and let mm -hmm. them sit for you know, eight to ten minutes before you put them on the grill. 
And then right before you grill them or saute them in a pan, you can add a little butter, mm -hmm. a little olive oil, a little salt, pepper. If you like more Cajun things, you can add some, you know, some uh, pepper flakes okay. or cumin. You can do a lot to yeah. them. But once you have them all butterfly like this, then you, like I said, you brine them a few minutes, okay. you know, eight to 10 minutes, and then you can add those flavors and spices to them and it's super super simple thing yeah, to and do. for you men out there that are scared <laughs> about cooking it overcooking it or undercooking it when it turns pink it's done it's done so it's done. easy this is actually easier than chicken or anything like that because it already has a it has a, a go sign on it once it once mm -hmm. it starts turning pink then it's good yeah. right and that's yep. true and it cooks very fast yep. yeah shrimp is is done in you know four to six minutes yep. you know yeah. you put it in the grill flip it over a couple of times or put it in a saute pan and 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 again People are a little turned off by the shells, right. but the shells on shrimp are so easy to remove. Yeah. Yeah. They and just pull right off when they're in the raw state. Yeah. And so also for, for kids, it's good because it gives them something to do that's what I was and they, they like to do it. And then mm -hmm. also it's a little bit more appealing to them as well because, you know, getting kids uh, to the table to eat and get them interested in seafood sometimes can be tricky. So I think yeah. shrimp... Uh, is a good starter starter mm -hmm. for, for kids these days. And it's great finger food too for yeah. for kids. If you if they are introduced young and they yeah. get used to the texture, they'll enjoy it. And again, for y what you do in with the diabetics, it's it's a, a, a dish that's low, low, low in fat. Yep. As well. Yeah, high in protein, low in fat, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. easy to make, and it's also a good snack. So you can. Uh, when you buy them at the store, you can actually, if you want, cook a whole bag and they last about a week. Right. Uh, so for the finger food and the snackers that diabetics are, uh, mm -hmm. this is a good snack for them. So if you have any diabetics at home, <laughs> you know, get the crackers and chips and cookies out and put some more shrimp and make right, them uh, eat some right. shrimps and vegetables. Yep. Perfect. A little bit of, a little bit of uh, low calorie sauce and we can go on. So that is my, my little tip on doing up the shrimp. I hope our, our ladies and gentlemen at home will find that they're going to start using the fresh and not the frozen so yeah. much. Definitely should. Yes. I know I will from now yeah. on. That was a huge difference. Yes. Yeah, a couple more minutes and better better, better taste, and especially when you're trying to introduce uh, whether it's kids or adults. I know mm -hmm. a lot of adults have never had, especially in Nebraska, yes. uh, never had any yeah, seafood. We, right, so yes. this is a good introduc introductory, and then also you want it to taste uh, you know, as best as it can the first time. So uh, I think the shrimp is the way to go. Absolutely. Okay. The, the second thing we're going to talk about is, you know, this, this particular dish has a, you know, a base of either spinach uh -huh. or mixed greens. And, you know, if you listen to the news every once in a while, you'll hear about an E. coli breakout. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to, even though the, the dish come, it comes in a bag and it looks clean, rinse it off first. Yeah. And this little gadget here is a, shrimp, is a salad spinner. We've been seeing them for years. This is from our um, our Pampered Chef consultant. She loves this one because it's so easy to do. It's like yeah. pretty fun. You better give it a try. Yeah, yeah give it, it a well, try. Trust me. Well, this is just like a, like if I'm at the playing games. But I, again, for you know me having two kids, mm -hmm. this is great. If you ever want to get yeah. your kids introduced to cooking and make it fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stuff like this is good. Then you have salad in there so they hopefully equate fun with salad so they can eat some more greens. Yeah. Right, yeah. So tell us a, a little bit more about, you've got two daughters. Two daughters. Can you tell us their names and ages? Uh, uh, Soleil and CL, 10 and seven uh, respectively. I always say 20 or 30 and 20 because they, they think they're a lot older than they are. But <laughs> yeah. uh, I try to uh, introduce them to seafood as early as possible. Yep. Uh, I've you know obviously been taking them back to the East Coast and so they've had shrimp. Uh, blue crab, lobster, and all that oh, stuff. Wow. So I always tell them, you guys have expensive taste, so you better you know get the education <laughs> and job. But yeah. uh, I think it's important just because yeah. you never know where they'll end up, and uh, they you know work wise or something like that. And uh, some people, if they cook a dish for you, they find it you know disrespectful. You don't eat it, so you have to be able to ha be able to exactly. taste everything and, and exactly. be able to yeah. hold yourself. But uh, I love seafood, and uh, I think it's one that was, was a major part of my diet when I played. It's still a major part of my diet right now, and it's something uh, that I think all diabetics should look towards as well. I would agree. Now, with our dish today, we were, were going to do a beverage pairing, and I know Absolutely. we have a really special <laughs> di a diabetic friendly beverage pairing. Absolutely. So, Angela, tell us a little bit about that. All right. Well, we asked um, John at Salt Restaurant to go ahead and come up with a beverage pairing that not only would be light and be able to complement this meal, but also something that's diabetic friendly. Because a lot of the times you go to a restaurant, you do really well with your food, but then you order up a margarita or some other calorie yeah. bomb that's just full <laughs> of sugar. 
And so we wanted to make sure that John came up with something that would um, stay diabetic friendly while still be being delicious and pair well with this meal. What do you usually have when you make this meal, John? Uh, uh, Jay. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I usually have water. That is my uh, okay. beverage of choice. Uh, but since you just introduced me to, or are going to introduce me to yes. Summer Breeze, mm -hmm. I yes. think Summer Breeze is going to overtake water uh, very shortly here. So <laughs> All right. um, I'm a big water drinker, I'm not, and I try to keep my kids away from the sugary drinks yeah. and stuff like that, you know, one a day and all that stuff. But you try to get zero a day, it doesn't happen right. because they do have that memory. They mm -hmm. get one a day. Uh, and they're not going to have any summer breeze. Uh, <laughs> not so, for many, many yeah, years. But I am going to have some. All right. And I, and I want to thank John, myself, because you have just enlightened me. Again. This is so enlightening for me. I've, I've learned how to butterfly, and I have the summer breeze. Now yeah, this is well. phenomenal. Men out there, diabetics, look at this. You get enlightened. And then you get the summer breeze. That's right. right. And awesome, the summer awesome. breeze is very, very simple to do. All it is is some citron vodka. And then there's some soda in it, as well as some mint and some lime. So and really cucumbers. Cucumber. Don't cucumbers. let me forget the, the cucumbers. The cucumbers are what give it the that summery flavor. Absolutely. It's kind of a little surprise when you drink it, but it is. It's healthy. It has those nice healthy antioxidants in it from the vegetables. Yeah. yeah. And really, what um, what John wants us to do is to put it into a shaker. Um, we had the shaker on our show with Zach Potter. Uh, we did not bring it on this show. We've already shaken it and put it in our pitcher. But you just shake up the ingredients with some ice and it chills it and makes it perfectly ready to serve. Now, if you did want to give your girls a summer breeze, leave out the vodka, yeah, all the course, taste would still course. be there. Yeah, yeah. The taste <laughs> would still be there. Yeah, the taste will be yeah. there. Yep, all so of you them. could they have a, nice. um, an alcoholic mm -hmm. and a non-alcoholic version of it and they'd feel like they were they were having the same right, yeah, one even, yeah, exactly, so, so that's the key. Do you want to give that a good stir for us? I will. All right. So I'm going to use the stir. I usually, trust me, if, you, if we weren't on TV, I'd be using my fingers. So <laughs> <laughs> we we all have to taste this one, yeah, so yeah. no fingers. I'll wash my hands. All <laughs> right. I'm going to go ahead and pour us all a taste of this. And actually, I'm gonna, I don't know what you want your hands because you had to mess Which with Which if that. you have oh, a shaker, the ice much. won't go in there like that, but this will be just... Perfect. Thank you. Go ahead Thank and serve so up much. some of that. I love these cute little glasses, even though you'd have to fill it up about five 45 times. times yeah, but it's 45 cool. times. <laughs> All in moderation, right? That's right. I can get go some ahead bigger and give ones. They try? sell bigger ones. I think we yeah. should get the really big ones. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Next show, right. big ones. Sorry. Yeah. Maybe we can come back. I will. <laughs> for the big, for the Trust big me, glasses. I'll bring my own with a little okay. spice to it, right? <laughs> All right, let's All give right. this a try. Cheers. 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 Ooh, that is, that's wow. got a kick. That yeah, is see, I, see I, I like the, the, that it's a little tart. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I like that. I yeah. like, you know, with the grapefruit juices and stuff right. like that with yeah. the lime, but I can taste the cucumber. So mm -hmm. I'm, while you guys are putting yours down, I'm gonna have me another. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about our salad here. Now this salad, what I loved about this was the, the you had a little fresh lemon juice that you said we were supposed to kind of squeeze over the top, and this is another yeah, one of those. Don't be bashful on the lemon juice. One of all, and, um, from our, our Pampered Chef, um, right. consultant and See, it's awesome because it doesn't let any of the seeds one, go. One of the things my grandma always told me is that you know when you have your salad dressing in order to I guess n not to have as much mm -hmm. then you can do more with you know your lemon, your lime on here, your little uh, maybe uh, lemon pepper or something mm -hmm. like that right. and, and obviously they have uh, you know Mr. Dash and stuff like that for sure. diabetics so you can spice it up so you don't have sure. to have as uh, many calories from your salad dressing because those are hidden calories for diabetics right. that sometimes can throw off your meals. Um, but the spices and stuff give it give it the nice little kick that I, I like myself and I suggest everybody else try it. Absolutely. Now this is considered a, a composed salad, so we can just pick out what we want, put it on our plates. And not with your fingers. Yep. <laughs> ladies, ladies first. I am okay. a gentleman. All right. All right. Like, do not be bashful on the shrimp. Uh, I will tell you, I love cucumbers. I love carrots. Okay, what I love do you tomatoes. not like here? I love everything here. Okay. That's why I was in the meal. I usually yeah. go for the avocado. Yep. You got to get a little bit of, bit of everything. and. Uh, you know, I, nice for you, sampling. look, the shrimp is, is it, to me, is a, is a great uh, protein uh, just because it's such low in fat and uh, you can eat lots of it and then also uh, you won't feel like weighed down, say like if you ate a, you know, big steak or something like that. Uh, so I like it. And, and I always suggest to people, for, especially for us men, yeah. uh, when you're trying to make these different type of meals, yeah. uh, try, try, different, try different type of spices or uh, salad dressings. And it, yeah, when you're in the, in, the, in the grocery store, you always try to look like you know what you're doing. Yeah. So this is a way to fake it till you make it, right? Awesome. <laughs> well, you can find this whole recipe um, at, in our cookbook. 
Um, go to BigRedRecipes.com to learn more about Jay, to learn more about some of our other players. A lot of them have really great stories about why they chose their recipe. There's um, information about their charities in the cookbook um, and on our website. And the full recipes will all be in Big Red Recipes. So if you do want that full recipe, um, please go ahead and check out the cookbook. And it will be there along with 43 other great recipes. Are we ready to try this, guys? I'm always ready. All right. <laughs> Do you go with some? Did just a little bit. Just a little bit. Right. Yeah, just, just a little tasting. bit. I did purchase the the light, mm -hmm. which you had suggested in the recipe to do a light ranch or Thousand Island and yeah. whatever whatever your flavor was. So we mm -hmm. just went with the with the lighter. Perfect. But I'm all about the shrimp. Now the bad thing about the the shrimp when it when you don't have it peeled is you, yeah. you have yeah, to remember that before you put a little dressing I'm, on it. That's what I'm working on. Yeah, over but here. what you do is you cook the shrimp. To, to whatever your taste, whatever mm -hmm. you like. Then you peel it off because the flavor's already into the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Then you, it's actually, I guess I call everything a la carte. So you just kind of have it a la carte and it'll be ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite salad dressing is Paul Newman. Mm, he has uh, some be, great stuff. It's great stuff and also goes back to his charity. Yep. So I, I always uh, like it's people. organic too. Organic as mm -hmm. well. And, uh, you know, orga organic with diabetics, I think it's pretty good. So, but pretty this good. is great too. I like it. And, uh, yeah, try it with a drink. Oh. It oh. really, really, really complements it well. Right. Well, you know what? This this show mm. is nearly over. I want to thank our viewers for joining us again this week on uh, the Big Red Kitchen Show. Um, we just want to thank our, our wonderful guest today, Jay. We're so well, glad. Thanks you for having came. me. You were just awesome. You've enlightened you. me and educated yes. me. I'm That's excited. We, do. And we have a wonderful uh, production crew who makes this show possible. They work very hard to make sure that we're on the air every week. So I want to thank them. And also want to let everyone know that if you would like to hear an, a little bit more about another football player or another gadget, uh, you can reach out to us. Email to um, the show at BigRedRecipes.com. We'd love to hear from you. So until next week, I'd like to say God bless, and we'll see you again on the Big Red Kitchen Show. Thank you so much. Hi, right, should we try some more yeah. of this? Oh, Let's have some more salad. Yeah. The summer breeze is <laughs> The Big Red <laughs> Kitchen Show was it? brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, The Pampered Chef Products, provided by consultant Heidi Lepold, Sea of Red Wine, D. Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D. Tendenza Food Styling, and Photography. Mm -hmm.